to do, everybody? I'm C. When we're back here with part number two of the top 100 NASCAR races of all time, I'm Christian Wilson, also known as Savage NASCAR 2, and let's get right into it. Qualifying was rained out for this event, so practice speed set the starting grid. Casey Mears started on the pole on a cold night with temperatures in the 50s for the August race. There wasn't many long green flag runs as two car incidents were the main story of the race. For the first half of the race, it seemed to be controlled by Joey Logano, who led 139 laps total. On lap 334, right after a restart, Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth were battling for the lead, and they crashed. After exiting his wreck number 14 Chevy, Stewart threw his helmet at Kenseth's car while he was exiting pit road. The throw was on target and the crowd roared. Joey continued to lead until lap 348. With under 70 to go, Reagan Smith turned Danica Patrick into the wall. Danica then tried to confront him while he passed by under caution. Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards battled for the lead in the end. With 39 to go, Denny Hamlin got by Carl Edwards for the final time and got his first career victory at Bristol Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon and Brian Vickers finished third and fourth. There was a total of 22 lead changes and 13 cautions in the race. Coming in at number 89 is the 2003 Aaron's 499. Held on a Sunday afternoon with temperatures in the upper 70s on April the 6th. The race started off in unexpected fashion. On lap number four, Ryan Newman blew a tire in turn one and hit the wall while almost rolling over as 26 other cars piled in. Newman's car was briefly on fire. The wreck also included Rusty Wallace, Jerry Nadeau, Ricky Rudd, Jimmy Spencer, and more. Dale Jr. who started in the back because of ended change received some front damage. Throughout the race, Dale had to pit multiple times to fix his left front fender that kept coming loose, and the team had a hard time getting the tape to hold in place. He was able to work his way back up to the front, almost dropping a lap down, though, at one point. With a couple laps to go, Downhart Jr. passed Matt Kenseth for the lead in the backstretch, but it was controversial. It appeared he went below the yellow line in an attempt to improve position. As the cars are racing down the back straightaway, Kenseth made a lane change after trying to block Jimmy Johnson going low. Earnhardt was on the inside, well below the line after passing Kenseth. NASCAR ruled that Earnhardt was forced below the yellow line, giving Downhart Jr. the win. It was his fourth in a row at the track. It was the 41st running of the 600-miler on Memorial Day weekend. Darrell Waltrip, in his last Coca-Cola 600 start, failed to qualify, but Carl Long let him drive the number 85. Great sportsmanship. Robbie Gordon was attempting to do the double, competing in an Indy 500 and Coca-Cola 600 in the same day. There was a lot of cool paint schemes in the race, including Dell Sr.'s Peter Max Rainbow Good Rent Chevy. Downhart Jr. led the most laps with 175 of 400. In the end, Bobby Labonte and Matt Kenseth were battling for the lead. Kenseth got by his teammate with 26 laps to go and held him off to get his first career Winston Cup victory. Kenseth became the 11th different winner in the first 12 races of the 2000 season. A crowd of 94,000 was on hand for this one. Kelly Arbor started on the pole but was quickly passed by Downhart Sr. After an Elliott Forbes Robinson crash, Richard Petty's transmission broke, ending his day. On lap 157, the most serious accident of the day happened when Trevor Boyce, who was racing in the top 10 with Tommy Ellis, was clipped and spun and flipped into the trioval. Boyce climbed out uninjured. On the final lap, Earnhardt intentionally dragged the brake, entering turn 1, but he got a massive run and slingshotted past Terry Labonte on the backstretch to take the win. Buddy Baker finished second, Labonte third, Allison fourth, and Yarborough fifth. It was his second year in a row that he won the race, and he won both races with last lap passes. Full sitter David Pearson of the first 17 laps before Buddy Baker got by. Rick Newsom spun on the 10th lap, bringing out the first caution of the race. Kelly Yarborough blew an engine five laps later and finished last. With 17 laps to go, David Pearson and Benny Parsons were battling for the win, and they both got together and crashed into the wall. 
opened the door for Bobby Allison, and he held off Daryl Waltrip at the line by one car length to take the win. It was his second win of the season, and the first at the track since 1972. This next one may come to a surprise, but I think this one deserves to be in the top 100. The 20th race of the 1951 season was held on August the 12th from 16,352 people. The race was one of the most important at the time because Bill France took NASCAR's unique brand of stock car racing to the doorstep of the automotive industry. To his delight, the automotive executives became interested in the sport after watching the race. Well, cars dropped out with mechanical problems, including the fabulous Hunted Hornet. On lap 130, a huge crash on the back straightaway blocked the track. Ten cars were involved, and cars were still racing despite being almost completely junk, including Lee Petty's car. Look at that thing. In the race, Curtis Turner and Tommy Thompson bowed for the win, but they both crashed into the wall. They both continued, but Turner's busted radiator did them in with 17 to go. Thompson went on to win the race. As NASCAR grew, more manufacturers became interested in the sport and became involved. Where would we be today without this race? All sitter Ken Schrader and Mark Martin traded the lead early. Jimmy Spencer and Kyle Problems early with brake problems. He miraculously recovered to finish 7th. Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin, Dale Jarrett, and rookie Jeff Gordon spent time out front in the race. Dale Earnhardt fell a lap down after spinning on pit road and got into Greg Sachs, spinning him with 73 to go. NASCAR penalized him in pit road for one lap, much to the displeasure of the team who protested the penalty. It was Senior's third penalty, but he came back and took the lead with 39 to go from Irvin to win his third Coca-Cola 600 and his second in a row. Before the race, a drunk fan stole the pace car and went around the track twice before police formed a blockade and stopped him. It was the 17th race of the season, and Bill Elliott won the pole with a speed of 209 miles per hour. The lead changed hands 49 times among 26 drivers. The first time in racing history a race had seen over half of the starting field lead at least one lap. On lap 160, Bobby Hillen Jr. tagged race leader Harry Gant and a wreck broke out. The Mads scrambled for the lead, and Sterling Marlin got into Bobby Allison, breaking out another multi-car wreck. Then Richmond got by Sterling Marlin from second, as Hillen won his first career Cup Series race by three car lengths. At the time, he was the third youngest driver in NASCAR Winston Cup history to win a race, and went down as one of the biggest upsets. 40th running of the historic Labor Day weekend race at Darlington was a steamy one. Dale Earnhardt blacked out on the first lap, causing him to fall off pace. Popular opinion from NASCAR fans would blame his sudden blackout on an allergic reaction to a combination between Gatorade and tomatoes. Bill Elliott led the most laps with 181 of 367 and came home fourth. In the end, Jeff Gordon, who led 116 laps, and Jeff Burden battled for the win. Gordon and Burden bumped multiple times during the closing laps, with Gordon taking home the victory. This is ninth of the season. Afterwards, a dejected burden said, I tried to put him in the wall, but I missed. In this one, Kurt Busch was in control most of the race, leading a race high 76 laps. Many chase drivers had trouble throughout the day. There would be two red flags for rain delays. On lap 27, Kyle Busch was spun out by Hart Jr. and hit the wall. Busch would finish 41st. Matt Kenseth, Jeff Gordon, and Jimmy Johnson took turns out front. With sunset pending, NASCAR tried to shorten the race to 225 laps. There was multiple multi-car pileups late in the race as cars were trying to save as much fuel as possible. The race ended under yellow as Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer sped past race leader Greg Biffle who had run out of fuel. NASCAR declared Biffle the winner, breaking his 28 race losing streak. Thanks for watching today's video, and if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. Or subscribe slash follow if you haven't yet already. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all very much for watching. I hope y'all have enjoyed it so far. And make sure to tune in for part three coming soon. Peace.